Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be creating an explainer animation inside of Fusion. So the first thing you want to do is you want to download a vector file and uh, use your favorite vector editing program. I'll be using Affinity Designer. So this is the file that I downloaded from freepick.com and uh, I ended up removing extra elements from this scene over here. And this is the modified version of the original file over here. So we'll be animating this uh, delivery truck over here. You can use SVGs since Fusion supports SVG files, but uh, in this example over here, I'll be exporting all the assets as a PNG image. So here I have carefully extracted or grouped the same components as a single group or single file. So you can see the buildings over here are in single group over here or single layer. And then we have road and then the truck. We have the body separated from the tires because we will be animating the truck separately and the tires will be animated separately as well. And then lastly, we have the clouds over here that you can add to your scene as well. Exporting these is pretty simple in Affinity and Designer. So you select um, the layer that you want to export as a PNG. So I'm going to select this buildings. Go to File, Export and select PNG. And instead of exporting the whole document, we will choose selection only. And then you can see the size changes over here. Click on preview and you can see that it has only selected the buildings. And you can do this uh, same thing with all the different layers over here. And you can um, change, uh, you can export the buildings as an SVG file as well if you want to maintain that crisp quality. But I think it's too hard to uh, work with SVGs inside of fusion because there is a long list of nodes but you can reduce that if you carefully you know make sure that uh, all of these layers you can see that there is there are lots of layers over here we just have to be careful while creating your assets and then uh, you can minimize the amount of nodes inside the fusion page but let's just keep this simple for now we will export all of these assets all of these layers as png file so uh, I have already done that. So I'm going to be showing you right over here. You can see that I have my building as a PNG image. Then we have clouds, which I guess we will not be adding. We have the road over here, the truck, the body of the truck. Next thing is the tire. I only exported the single tire because the other tire is pretty much identical. So we can just uh, copy and paste the same node and add our animation to it. So once your asset are ready then you can go to the fusion page or the fusion open up inventory or go to fusion and you can like change these settings over here if you want to all right great so uh i will i don't know it's just gone to that corner i don't know why let's just use the default which is this is a 1080p 24 fps composition so let's just work with that the first thing we'll do is we will add in our by the way, in my media pool, I have all of these assets over here. Let's start with the text node. I'm going to type in delivery service. Let's change the font, increase the size and make it look nice. We'll right click and add in a follower modifier. Go to modifiers over here. Set this to like 0.5. You can change it at any time. Let's go to the shading tab and we can animate any of these properties over here. We will animate the position property so let's expand that make sure that you are at the very first frame which is frame zero and uh, let's create keyframe there this will add this path modifier in here as well but let's just go back to the follower one you can even rename these if you want so let's just rename this to follower position if you have multiple followers applied then it will just help you identifying which follower is applied to which property so um, we'll be animating offset over here. So at the very first frame, we set the position, which has changed it. Let's bring it up like that. And let's go to frame, uh, let's do 30, set this to zero, which is the center. And if you take a look at the animation, this is how it is going to look. Let's go to the spline and make sure that we see these keyframes. You have to click on this node to see all of this, all of the list over here. Select everything, click on this icon, zoom to fit, select all, hit S on the keyboard or 
click on this icon, hit T to get the ease in and ease out values. Ease it into 100. And I have a nice animation like this. And now you can add more um, properties if you want to. You can animate the rotation or any other property over here. But let's just keep this simple for now. We will animate the position property. So the next thing is the background. We will be, let's add in a background and connect it up. This will result in merge one. Let's view this and hit control T so that the text is in front. And on the background, we will change the color. And actually, I have the hex code over here. I'm going to paste it by pasting and now it's not working. So I have to go to the, the vector program over here and copy the color code from here. And uh, back into Fusion, we will paste this hex code over here. Click on OK. So uh, we have this animation with the background now, which is what we want. Next thing is we want to build our scene now. So let's just go to the media pool and drag in our first image, which is the image of buildings. Let's rename that as well. Connect it. This will result in another merge. Let's take a look at it. We have our buildings over here and just scale it down so that it fits within this composition. The next thing is, let's go to the media pool and drag in the roads. Rename it to roads, connect it up and make sure that it is scaled down properly and it is at the bottom over here. So I'm going to go to merge to over here which is connected to buildings and just move it up like that. All right, so now we will bring in another asset, which is going to be the body of the truck. Let's rename this to truck and connect it up with this merge 3. Take a look at it. This is how it's going to look. I'm going to scale it down to 0.5, I guess, and change the position and bring it closer to the road. Bring in the tire image and connect it up like that. Let's rename this to tire. Take a look at it and the tire, let's just go to merge 5 and set this to 0.5 as well. And let's just change the position. This will be the tire on the left. Right, so you can rename it to tire underscore left. And I'm going to copy and paste it down below. This will be tire underscore right. And since you already have uh, the size and the position values over here in the previous merge. Let's copy this and paste it down below and connect it up as a background. This will be a foreground. Take a look at it and all we have to do is now change the position. And the size, I'm going to actually set this to 0.4. I think that's too small. So let's just set this to 0.45. So it's personal preference. You can keep the same size up for the tire, but I'll just make it a little bit smaller than the tire on the left. So that's it. We have our scene ready. Now all we have to do is animate things over here. For the animation, we will be using transform nodes. So let's, after this buildings, add in a transform node. Type in XF in the search field and search for transform. Let's go the very first frame and we will animate the building over here. So in animation or in real life as well, the things that are far move relatively at a slower pace than the things that are in the foreground. So basically, since the buildings are in the background, it will move slower than the road which is in the foreground or which is closer to the camera. So in the transform, we'll go to the very first frame, create a keyframe on center X and Y. Let's go to the last frame and change the position. And we'll set this to around 0 0.35. And you can see now we have this empty space over here. We can fill it in by setting the edges to wrap. And now take a look at it. You can see we have our buildings moving to the left. Now for the roads as well, we will add in transform. We will go to the very first frame and animate again the center x and y with a keyframe and let's go to the last frame and we will just change it 
move to the left and set the edges to wrap so if you check out the animation you can see now uh, the buildings have uh, relatively low, slower sl speed they're moving at a slower speed than the road um, you can increase the center x to the left a little bit more so that it, it moves a little bit more faster there you go so now we will animate the truck itself or let's just animate the tire first so let's add in a transform and we will simply animate the rotation so create a keyframe on angle let's go to the last frame and move the tire so we set this to around 1000 so let's check it out um, so there you go tire is moving and if you're thinking that it is slow you can increase the last keyframe on the angle over here i'm going to copy and paste it down below because the other tire will have the same animation now what i want to do is add a little bit of wobbliness if that's a word we'll add some um, wobble effect on this tire so let's check this transform 3 which is connected to this tire on the left go to center x and y right click modify with perturb go to modifiers and if you take a look at the animation you can see our tire is uh, moving in all directions we set the x scale to zero we don't want any movement on the horizontal axis we just want the movement on the vertical axis we'll also reduce the y scale set this to 0 0.02 ish and you can see now if you zoom in you will you'll see that it is uh, wobbling in up and down direction and you can increase the speed as well so you can see that it is actually um, wobbling like that um, so yeah I'm happy with that animation I think it just adds a little bit more uh, life into our scene and this is the same animation I want to apply on the tire which is on the front so let's uh, select this transform which is connected to the tire on the right and you can just simply right click connect to and put a one then select value so both tires will have same movement which uh, I think it does not look right so let's just undo this and uh, I'm actually going to create a new one connect uh, so go to modify with uh, perturb go to modifiers set the x scale to zero and set the y scale to 0 0.02 and uh, we will play this and i'm going to increase the speed uh, they will have same animation but now we will reseed it so now it will be a little bit different next up is the body of the truck over here and then we can just simply add in a transform again and do the same thing we will animate the angle and the center y over here so let's uh, right click modify with uh, let's uh, use the connect to perturb option over here perturb one value let's see how that works yeah i think that is good that is exactly what we want on the angle as well let's connect it to um oh there is no option for this so i, th I guess we had to just add in a new perturb on this so right click on angle modify with perturb with modifiers and here the controls are a little bit different since uh, this is uh, we, we don't have the y and the x option over here so this is angle so that's why well so let's just um, play this and see what's happening over here you can increase the strength um, to see it uh, more clearly we the angle is being animated i think it is too much so we'll just reduce that and yeah i think that is that's good i think that's looking fine you can definitely spend some time in here and you know fine tune these settings these little details but i'm just gonna leave this here the next thing what we want to do is we want to transition from this scene that we have over here text scene we will transition from this scene over here to our in our explainer scene over here 
for that what we have to do is after this merge we'll add in a transform and uh, let's take a look at it we will go to let's see we will go to frame uh, 60 and create a keyframe here or let's go to frame 50 create a keyframe on center x and y and let's move forward to frame 80 and we'll just uh, basically create the same keyframe because uh, we want this scene to be our main scene let's go to the uh, keyframe with the previous keyframe which is at frame 50 over here and we will just uh, move it down over here all right so now it's going to transition like so all right so let's uh, go to the very first frame you can see that our text animation is right over here which is not what we want so what we are going to do is after this merge one add in a transform click on add and we will go to frame 50 again and change the position and bring the text back in the center so set this to 1.5 so you play the animation this is how it is going to look it's going to transition from the text scene over here into this explainer scene now we don't have the background over here so it's an easy fix uh, we can just simply copy this background over here and paste it down below and connect it to this transform and now we have a background as well take a look at it one more time there you go right so now we we can just make this animation smooth so let's just select this hit s and ease it in there you go now finally you can enable motion blur if you go to the last transform over here settings and enable motion blur and there you have it so that is it that's how you can create an explainer animation inside of fusion i hope it this video was helpful but don't forget to leave a like and also subscribe to this channel if this video is helpful and i will see you guys in the next one all we have to do is just add in a media out over here and you'll have the animation in the edit page over here as well see you guys in the next one bye